So when we talk about uh, people to go to Canada, the biggest thing people hear a lot, and I don't know whether it's because of the name itself, uh, they hear the word express, express entry. Is it yeah. a faster process? <laughs> Uh, so, can you take us through what, first of all, is this express entry? That's number one. Number two is how can one person process through express entry? Can a person process this one, you must be in Canada or while you are outside of Canada? And then oh, the other question will come yeah. from there. Thank you so much, IBM. Actually, yeah, that's a very good question. And, and, and most people don't understand how Canada immigration operates. But I would tell you that Canada immigration is the easiest if you understand. So express entry is like the umbrella for all the other streams. Whichever stream you use, you will finally end up going through express entry. Whether you come as a visitor and you want to settle, whether you come as a student, whether you come through other pathways, finally you will settle under express entry. So express entry is uh, managed by the federal government, which is the Canada government. And the website for uh, Canada immigration is, is canada.ca. And then under canada.ca, you'll find IRCC. So this express entry is, um, is a system that works with points. It works, it's point-based. So that they assess you according to your education, the higher you're educated, the more points you get, they also look at your age, the younger you are, the points you get. They also look at how many years of experience you have in your working area. The, the more the working years, the better. And if you have working experience in Canada, the better. So here we are saying that even somebody who is in Canada can as well use this express entry if, exactly. they, have to, if they want to settle here finally, like legally. The other thing they look at is your marital status. Are you married? When you're single, you have got lesser points than someone who is married. Somebody who is married, they also count the spouses, English proficiency and education and, and all that. The other thing they assess is your, is your level of uh, English prof proficiency. That they, they mainly use IELTS for, 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 English, uh, for, for English speakers and, and also for Francophone, they also use TFT. So for, for, for that, they also assess how you can well speak, uh, you know, fluent English, uh, how you can listen, how you can uh, read, and also how you can write. write. Yes. Those are the two basic uh, points that they look at. So when they assess you under all these, you're, you're required to have at least 430 to 450 thereabout. The least they, they take is usually 430. But most of the time, when, when, uh, when there are so many people who have got more points, they also put a cutoff at 450. So it depends. Sometimes they'll even take somebody with 400. Because if that draw, because all these applications go into a pool, yes. it's like all of them go just the way the lottery does for, for US. But for ours, it's now under... It's a pool merit. of professionals. It's for professionals. It's based on merit. So this pool, all the points go there. And then now from there, they, they, they pick the highest points. So sometimes you find that in the pool, there are no people who, don't, who have more points. So that if, you, if you're lucky, you go into a pool that has got people with no many points, then you end up being selected. And then uh, now that is how it works, basically. But then after, if, if you cannot qualify for express entry, that is not the end of the world. There are other under ways. This, yeah. Under this express entry, it has got three major classifications. The first one is skilled workers. Skilled workers are people with education, at least a degree and above. Skilled workers. Yes. The second one is technical people. Okay? Technical people, these are people with at least uh, secondary education and some years of experience. Skills. This one is under skills. So that if you are a plumber, if you are an electrician, if you are a massage therapist, if you are a hairdresser and you have got skills and you can prove them, then you fall under that class of yes. technicals. Then the third one is Canada experience. Canada experience is now for somebody who has come to Canada either as a as a student, either as a visitor, or under any other... Any other way you have arrived in yeah. Canada. Yes. As long as you're in Canada, you're in that class. 
Now, when you're in that class now, you, 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 you get a work permit, an open work permit, and then when you get Canada experience in a full-time job for one year to two years, you qualify to apply for express entry. Yeah, okay. that's the summary of express entry thank you Faye. that is a very very good summary so i'm going to ask you some questions uh which i've been receiving from people about express entry yes if i compare with the green card lottery lottery is free of charge to apply but once you win you have to pay so for yeah. the express entry because it's not like you apply for free, kind of like a lottery festival, then you qualify. But this one, you go to the pool to get those 400, 450 score, the one they're supposed to have. But yeah. what is the cost associated? Oh, there are cost implications. Every yes. program in Kenya has got its cost implications. Uh, the cost implications is based on how many members of the family you're bringing to Canada. So if you're coming as one person, uh, uh, that that one is um, that one is sorry, that one is on um, your, the bank statement. First of all, you have to do a payment to the government, which is about one thousand five hundred Canadian average around there. Then once you apply that, uh, and then every uh, every extra member of the family will will also have to to pay separately or to add to this. And then on top of that, they also ask you whether you have got a bank statement to sustain this family when you bring them to Canada. If you're coming alone, they need you like 10,000 bank statement, Canadian. If you're coming with an extra person, it goes to 12,000. If you're coming with another one, 15,000, like that, like that. So yes, there are cost implications. However, some programs, like when you have a job offer to come to Canada, you don't require a job, you don't require to- The job to itself, it is the- yes. The yeah. job itself is going to stand in the place of uh, a bank statement because you're coming to have an income. So they don't require you to have a, 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 yeah. a, a bank statement. Before I go to uh, ask about bank statement, I want to clarify to people that yeah. when we talk about Canadian dollar is exactly amount of US dollar. So people should not, how can I convert it? Is it dollar for dollar? Yeah. So don't yeah, worry, yeah. it's just the same Canadian dollar, US dollar is the same dollar. Kind like yeah. it's one dollar, one dollar. Yeah, uh, bank statement. There are some people uh, get confused about bank statement. Yeah. And for students, it might be different. I'm giving example. Yeah. Let's say people are coming to study. Some people they can use bank statement of their parents or bank statement of their friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is this bank statement must be only one name or you can? Let's say someone is 30 years old, bachelor degree with three years of whatever experience and whatever the case has that experience can that person use the bank statement of himself plus the relative like you know in africa you can use your uncle or whatever or it must be all in your bank statement with your name that's a very good question and each program is it, it depends because like for students you can use even for an anco an anco yes. can decide to sponsor you to come and study in canada your organization that you're working for can decide to sponsor you and give you a bank statement uh but for express entry and visitors visa it has to be in your own account and even if you are putting lump sum money you the canada government needs to know where is this money coming exactly from. So you have to put a separate letter explaining that I sold a piece of land and I want to immigrate to Canada with my family. This is where this money is coming from. So it has to be in your It's not the money you put it today. Spouse. You put it mm. today and you take it to, tomorrow the other way. They have to see uh, yeah. it's not the money laundering. It's and just the... That money you can, yeah, EBM, that money you cannot remove it during the process. If the process is going to take you two years, this money has to remain in your accounts because anytime they can check, Exactly. So it is, it is a commitment. The, is a the only commitment. other way you can put it is to add more money. <laughs> you can only add, but you cannot reduce. If you reduce, you interfere with the process. Yeah, because it, we might reduce, they say, the the max, I mean, you're supposed to have minimum maybe 20,000 because maybe you are married, and then the time they come to check, you have 17. Yes. There is someone with 25, they put you away, they go continue with other people who qualify. Yeah, and also let us say here that Canada immigration is not only for Africans, it's not for Kenyans, it's not for Tanzanians. Even U.S. Uh, citizens. Me, yeah, people have been saying <laughs> me that Joyce, you only help Kenyans. No, 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 no. Canada immigration is for the entire world. This video should go to Asia, 
to South America, to North America. Even people in North America immigrate to Canada. People from the U.S., they want to come to Canada. And the majority of people in the U.S. move to Canada, among other things, is the yes. issue of medical. Medical, yes. Medical, medical is so good in Canada. Yeah. But in the U.S. is one among the worst medical, how expensive it is. So that's yes. why many people, they move there because the job and everything, it's easier to transfer in Canada. Yeah. And Canada and the U.S., lifestyle is almost the same. It's the same. It's just like one state and another state. The weather yeah. is the same. Everything is the same. Yeah. So yeah. let's continue with the express entry. Uh, mm -hmm. Another question with the express entry is, yeah. uh -huh. uh, can a person... While is he still a student, apply. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about, let's say someone finished bachelor degree, now is a master's student. Or is a uh, doctoral student. I know they are going to look about the points and everything. Yes. But do you need to graduate? Like, I, I understand if you apply express entry, let's say you must have a degree first, not you are studying for degree. But let's say mm -hmm. I finish my bachelor and now I'm doing my master's. Can mm -hmm. I apply while I'm still... A student. Uh, this one depends on which occupation you're studying for. Some occupations in demand in some provinces require you to apply after your, your after your you, you study for one year. After you study, you accumulate some hours for one year. Those are two semesters. They have got programs that you can apply for permanent resident as you study. And this was introduced during this COVID-19. Very few, like like healthcare, IT. Because they want students to start working because they have realized they are not getting enough exactly. migrants. So they have opened that leeway. And this one has started during COVID-19. However, before that, they required you to graduate. And then once you graduate, they grant you a postgraduate work permit. And then this work permit, you work for one year as a student, post-student. One year is enough for you to apply for, for, express, uh, for, for permanent resident. OK. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned something about pandemic. Yes. Uh, with the pandemic, there are yes. good and bad. Yes. Uh, one of the best part of the pandemic yes. is there was a demand of certain types of jobs. Yes. And we know in Western countries, there are some people, even here in the U.S., mm -hmm. don't want to go back to work because I can mm. get money from the government assistance. Yes. But be safe at my home. So many companies have lost uh, staff and there are so many incentives for people to go to work. How does that apply to Canada despite getting these accountants, I mean, to get nurses, to get engineers, to get medical professionals in general? But overall, how is, the, uh, is going to demand more people to come to work in Canada? Now, Canada has been hard hit by COVID, just like any other country. There is no single country in the world, even China, that has not been hit by this COVID-19. But every country is looking for ways of, uh, you know, uh, trying to recover yeah. what they have lost during COVID-19. And Canada's one of the uh, one of the ways it's using to recover its resources. It's it's, it's by allowing visitors to apply for jobs. And this job has to be LMIA. LMIA means that you have to look for an employer who has got permission to recruit a foreigner. That yeah. is what an LMIA, LMIA means. So once you find such a, an employer, they give you a job offer, and then you can apply for, for a work permit. Once you apply for a work permit as a visitor, then you can work in Canada for one year, two years. You enter under, express, uh, under Canada experience and then you can finally apply for express and for a uh, permanent resident. The express. So, yeah, that is one of the ways. The express. Even the students. Yeah. You can also convert a visitor's visa into a student nowadays. And this open has, has been extended up to 28th of February 2022. So we don't wow. know whether the Minister of Immigration is going to extend after that. But for now, we are working with up to 2022, February 28th. That's very, very good to hear that one. So people should yeah. just start applying. When we talk yes. about applying, we'll talk about education or going to study in Canada and what are the benefits or the yes. ways you can uh, continue after that. Yeah. Uh, but when we talk about the programs or the points, uh, we call the points-based immigration or rather merit-based immigration, uh, we know for sure that it's more objective process. 
that means if you have a degree, you have these points. But if someone has a degree in engineering and another one in political science, obviously mm. the weight will be on high demanding uh, job over the other down the road. Can you explain about uh, what type of professions either they are in high demand or they get higher priority from the government in general mm. versus the other? Because you'll get it, but your demand is not higher than the other one. Mm. That's a very good question. And each province, Canada has got 12 provinces, including Quebec. And each province, Quebec is the province where they speak only French, mainly <laughs> yeah. French, very few uh, people that speak English. So in each province, they have something called occupations in demand. Occupations yes. in, the, in demand is a list of the occupations that are in demand in that particular province. So I always advise even the students when you're coming to study Canada, check the province where you're coming to study, whether the course that you're coming to study is an occupation in demand after you graduate. Because some courses will not be in demand after you graduate, so what? So uh, every province has got occupations in demand, and there are so many, I cannot list all, all of them. But of yes. course, we know healthcare is one of them, IT, teachers are in demand, especially in, in Ontario. So there's a list of long uh, occupations which are in demand in every province, they, have, they are different. Okay. Uh, yeah. What advice do you give the people who want to study once they arrive in Canada? Because in the end, uh, uh. I apply. I'm, to, I'm not talking. I'm talking about uh, the easier way to convert or faster way to convert uh, to express entry or the demands. Like there are certain programs, like you are saying, that these jobs are in demands. But uh -huh. if someone today I want to come to Canada myself, uh, uh -huh. and down the road I want to get express entry, uh -huh. what will be the quicker way for me to? Uh, study certain particular type of job so that uh, it's in high demand. How do I know? Apart, uh, do also schools do that or just from the government, they are the one posting those one your provinces? That is for the student. Yeah. For the student, uh, when you're coming to Canada, you need to, uh, you need to, you need to, first of all, um, find out the kind of institution that you're coming to study. It's not every institution that is allowed to accept international students. Exactly. So the, the institution has to be DLI. DLI means designated learning institution. The government has given them authority or, or, or uh, permission to, you know, to train, uh, to train uh, international students. So. Uh, that is it. Yeah, you look at uh, the, the designated learning institutions. You also need to look at. Um, uh, you also need to look at uh, whether what 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 course are you studying? Is this course guaranteeing you a postgraduate work permit? It's not all the courses that are going to give you a, a postgraduate work permit. So you need to do your research. Find out if the course that you're coming to study in Canada is going to give you postgraduate uh, work permit. Because if your course is not giving you postgraduate work permit and even your institution, then it means it, after you graduate, you have you to... You will not be able to, 